Welcome back to another RCTV episode. I'm Brian. And I'm Kylie. On today's episode, we will be looking at... How a local motorcycle club defies stereotypes. A dive into the world of one competitive gamer. An overview of our esports program. A behind the scenes with our interior design. A Stuco spotlight and football hype teaser. That's all right here. Right now. On RCTV. How do you feel about motorcycle clubs? Like the gangs in movies? No, actually it's not like that at all. We looked at a motorcycle club that's not anything like the movies. The media tends to portray motorcycle clubs as violent groups of people. We wanted to check out a local motorcycle club in Rowlett to see if these speculations are true. When we first talked to ISMC, they informed us that they were at a place called King's Closet. We wondered what this organization was. The clothes that we sort here have all been donated somewhere else. So they bring them here, we sort them and bo box them up, put them in the trailer. They take them downtown and that, to Soul Church downtown and they give them out to the homeless and stuff. And they also have like a trailer where they can take showers and wash their clothes and they give meals. It has been a truly blessing to have so they had the club out here and just personalities, different personalities and just the camaraderie that they bring to the table and to, you know, King's Closet has been a, a complete blessing for all of us. After learning about the work they do here, we wondered what else they do for the community. Uh, we work with nonprofits to uh, donate time, uh, waiver money, uh, just to help people that are in need. Just recently, we did a back-to-school drive where throughout the year we were able to raise a considerable amount of money and obtain a lot of different school supplies, backpacks all the way down to glue sticks and put together bags to go and hand them out for free to anybody that might need them in our community. If motorcycle clubs do charity work, why do they get such a bad rep? Uh, this stigma comes from Sons of Anarchy, the, the TV shows, the... You know, in most people's eyes, everybody's running guns or drugs because of that show. I think that Hollywood has played a really big role in that since the 60s. I mean, you go you go all the way back, you you see movies, even with James Dean and them. Uh, they just depict all bikers as, as bad people. Uh, I see you. We kill him. Yeah! Just a negative connotation. We're, uh, we're not gangbangers. We don't go out there and hurt people or beat people up or cause any kind of problems for where I club and just a group of men. But this left us wondering, why ride as a club? Why not just ride alone? Being with your 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 you know your your friend, your group, your you know, it and riding with them, it's a whole other feeling. You know what I mean? You you look out for each other, you you bond, it's it, it it's it's like when you hang out with your best friend. Except we got a bunch of after talking to ISMC, we learned that motorcycle clubs are more bark than bite. This has been Kylie and Connor with RCTV. They really aren't what most people think of as typical motorcycle clubs. I agree. And our next story is about a student who's not your typical gamer, Ethan Guzman. Esports has taken the world by storm. And the down <laughs> air is going to connect. Yo! Gamers from all around the world have taken gaming to the next level from games like Fortnite, NBA 2K, and Super Smash Bros. Here at CHS, we have our very own esports superstar, Ethan Duzman, who shared his experience with us. I started competing in Smash Bros tournaments because I thought this would be a great experience for me to learn and have fun while going up against other people, kind of like communicating, seeing how good, I, how I differ from them yeah. and how they differ from me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ethan has had varied successes in the past competitions. My experience has differed since I've only competed in one in-person tournament and a f two online 
The two onlines, one I placed in third and the other I didn't do so great in. Ethan puts in practice to compete at a high level first match. I don't practice very often. Whenever I come to school is the main times I play. And whenever I practice, that's just me messing around online. Even top competitors like Ethan get nervous. I deal with them by just drowning out my thoughts and think no one's looking at me, no one's looking at the screen, it's just me and the screen, no one else is looking, I'm all by myself. Ethan tells us about some of his favorite memories when competing. My most memorable match would probably be in the national game. It was the last game I played. It was against a very good Ken player and Ice Climbers player. It was a very close match, too. Ethan gives us his knowledge on how to stay up to date with the latest skills and what separates the best from casual players. I mainly just watch content creators just play the game and I'm just talking over it. It's just kind of how I focus most of the time. What separates the top tier players is that they're more fast with make, coming up with stuff that bottom low tier players wouldn't really think of doing like certain combos, certain confirms, and just stuff that they won't be able to do very quick. Lastly, Ethan does advice to inspiring gamers. I inspire them to uh, just play how they would want, choose with whoever you want, do whatever you want, and just have fun. It's an exciting time for gamers like Ethan at RCHS. Ethan makes gaming competitions look like fun. I agree, and it's never been easier for our students to join. Here at Red City High School, there's a new electo called eSports. But what is eSports? Is a game or game design? Well, Jordan went to Mr. Flowers, who's in charge of eSports, to find out. Here's what he said. eSports is a club here at Roy City High School. It's divided into two parts. We have the, the casual side, where you just come in and hang out with some friends, play some video games, have a good time. But then we also have the competitive side where you actually compete and play video games against other people. That's great. Next, Mr. Flowers talks about games and competitions. Uh, we, we compete in several games, uh, the most popular one being Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Uh, but this year, we're partnering with a couple of different leagues. And uh, so we're doing things like Overwatch 2, Valorant, Apex Legends, Fortnite, Pokemon Unite, Splatoon, Mario Kart, Street Fighter 6. Madden, probably a few others that I'm not thinking of, but that's quite a few of them. That's a lot of games. And then Mr. Flowers talks about if you have to be in the club or not to play games. So we do have a, a class called Video Game Design, which is kind of geared towards esports. You don't have to be in the class to be part of the club and compete. I'm interested in who went to nationals. I'm also interested in what is Mr. Flowers' favorite game? My favorite game nobody has ever heard of. It is called Radiata Stories. It's made by Square Enix, same company that makes Final Fantasy. What's your favorite game? This has been Alex Babcock and Jordan Britt signing off. We have tons of amazing opportunities like esports here at ICHS. One of them is our amazing interior design program. That's right. Most people don't know that they are the group behind many of the amazing events at ICHS. Interior design works hard to decorate events for the school range from homecoming to award ceremonies. Join us as we unveil the world of interior design, a realm where creativity meets functionality, where beauty meets purpose. In this captivating class, aspiring designers unlock the secrets of transforming ordinary spaces into extraordinary havens. Discovery is the power of textures, the elegance of lighting, and the magic of spatial arrangements. I was around 10 whenever I first got interested. I had a a lot of games and apps that all were kind of centered around home design. And I really became interested in it. I didn't even really know it was a career because I was young. And I'd say it was around that time when I was like, oh, this is pretty cool. I kind of like this. I've always been a artistic girl and I've always just loved rearranging my room, trying to come up with like, be like great sceneries in my room and once my friend introduced me to interior design, I absolutely fell in love with it. Definitely a whole lot of planning beforehand before you even start anything, because if you do not do those proper steps, it will fall apart in your face and you're gonna be so devastated. We've been working on this for like four weeks now, 
Um, it started with just planning, like what props do we want to build, who wants to build what, groups, things like that. And then once we got that, and then we knew what we wanted to build, we had to make a rough sketch. And that took some time. And then we had to plan out what materials we wanted to use and how to build it, make sure it's all structurally safe. Then we had to get into actually building the structure. And that took some time for us and some trial and error. There's been so many just small, very house model buildings, but I really do love our fairy houses because they're such big projects and so much goes into it. And once they're finished, you just feel that sense of relief when you see your image come to life. You definitely need to have a creative mind and you need to be able to see a room and visualize what goes where or what would look good in the room, what colors. So you definitely need to have that visual in your head. And that just comes along with creativity as well. I definitely do write out my plans beforehand, just like set up like a visual of how I want to go at things. And if I don't do that, I'm going to be a mess. In the world of interior design, creativity has no bounds. This has been Vion for RCTV. They really made the homecoming dance enchanting. Another amazing student group, Stuco, is responsible for organizing and creating events like the homecoming dance. RCTV sat down with a few Stuco members to find out more. This past week, Student Council has worked very hard to organize events such as the homecoming and the recent pep rally, so we want to give a quick spotlight on Stuco. Student Council to me is a place where we can foster a sense of school spirit through organizing events that recognize community traditions, school traditions, staff, and students. It's where we cultivate spirit and connection um, among the students and promote a certain vibrance uh, within our atmosphere. It's important to us that our hospitality caters to multiple different areas of need. We host a lot of the pep rallies, a lot of all the spirit themes that you see going on. It's a lot of first planning and then like contacting who's going to be involved and ensuring that your plans are going to go through and everyone is aware of what's happening. My favorite part of student council would have to be just getting to connect with other organizations across campus, whether it be athletics, cheer, or RCTV or Taffy, just that collaboration that happens towards one common goal. You're able to promote change uh, within the student community and start your own initiatives. Um, we have a link in our bio at Roy City Stuco on Instagram where you can fill out a form uh, to let us know what you're interested in or you can just DM us and we can help you get plugged in. Stuco takes a lot of pride in what they do. RCHS needs some bulldog pride. Let's take a sneak peek into this year's football hype video by Cameron Denson. Thanks for watching this month's episode. To watch more episodes, go to youtube.com slash rctvteennews. This has been Brian. And Kylie. For, for RCTV. RCTV.